may be seated. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I hold the keys of hell and death. Because I live, you shall live also. Friends, we have gathered here to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Lloyd Morrison Brown. We come together in grief, acknowledging our human loss. May God grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow, hope, and in death, resurrection. Our first hymn to sing today is Victory in Jesus.
revelations. After this, I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our, Lord, our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever, amen. Then one of the elders addressed me saying, who are these robed in white and where have they come from? I said to him, sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, these are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Would you please join me in reciting Psalm 23, which is found in your bulletin. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And all God's people said, Amen. At this time, we will have some special tributes. Family, friends, this is the last thing I thought I would need to do. Do a eulogy for Lloyd, my younger brother. But that's Lloyd for you. He's always trying to up, one up me and he succeeded to his dying day. Now you have copies of Lloyd's eulogy, and I'm going to try and fill in the blanks. 
the way things were supposed to happen. In our family, we have order. Ronnie was the eldest, followed by Byron, followed by me, followed by Lloyd, followed by Noel. Ronnie died the first, as I would say he was supposed to because he was the eldest. Byron, who was second in line, he passed on. I, who am third in line, are here. I'm here, and I wonder why. Now Lloyd decided that he was not going to wait on me, so he went along. That's Lloyd for you. Now, I'm just going to try and put a little force behind Lloyd. When we were youngsters, Byron, two years older than I, I, two years older than Lloyd, the three of us were the three musketeers. Well, we didn't do much as musketeers. All we did was get in a whole lot of trouble. And who do you think was the biggest troublemaker of us all? Sorry to say, it was Lloyd. The reason is that, you know, Lloyd could not see something and not want to touch it. He's always getting us in trouble with our father. Our dear papa, let me tell you something about my dear papa, our papa. He followed the biblical instruction that whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth. My father loved us very much. And there's another one about sparing the rod and spoiling the child. I can assure you we were not spoiled. He loved to use his policeman's cane on us. And I have to admit to you today that the one who caused us the most caning from our father of the three of us, who do you think it was? Lloyd because his of his propensity to always be touching things. Like one Sunday, our father painted the frame of his bicycle, and he put the frame out to dry. So Baron came, looked at the frame, passed by. I came, I looked at the frame, passed by. Then came Lloyd, looked at the frame, and he's touching it all over the place, leaving his fingerprints on the, on, on, on the frame that my father just painted. I will swear to this day that my father knew which one of us did it. But he had to bring us up to judgment. So he called up three of us, and when nobody immediately admitted to the crime, he promptly caned all three of us. That was what he was like. Now, it took us a long time, 
after Lloyd became a senior, a man, to realize that this penchant of his for touching was really a, an, an idea of trying to learn. He had a propensity for learning and he had to find out what is was. So he, that's what really his touching of things was about. Now, of the three of us, I was the good guy. I was Mr. Goody Goody. Never got into trouble. Uh, a few times, you know. Never got, had to be corrected by my father. Hmm, maybe once or twice. But one a special time I can remember was when I was caught red-handed with a catapult in my hand, stoning down plums from our neighbor's plum tree. And who happened to be walking by from the police station? My father caught me red-handed. He never usually caught me red-handed. I'm always very sneaky. But this time he caught me. And he used his policeman's cane on me. And I couldn't, couldn't say that it was somebody else who did it. He saw me, he caught me, and he caned me. Okay. You know, I spoke earlier about Lloyd's propensity for touching, but he grew up to be a man whom one could trust, good judgment. He applied his knowledge for the good of his countrymen. He served his countrymen with dignity, with courage, and with passion. I can say that during his, the middle part of his life and towards the end of his life, I was proud of the person he grew up to be. Now, when he got towards the end of his life, I think he made a few misjudgments. And he never used an excuse for the sorrows he went through. Just imagine, as a father, he lost two of his three sons, one to a childhood disease and one to a horrible New Year's Eve accident on the road. I don't know how many parents could deal with that. Two out of three. Here's Robert. Robert is the oldest and he has survived. But Derek and Gordon left. But you know, Lloyd never used that sorrow as an excuse for what happened in his later life. And speaking about his later life, I have to mention that his Pam, as he called her, my Pam, was indeed his Pam. She stood with him, she nursed him, she did everything that a person could do for another person. And I just want to say to her, 
publicly now. Thank you, my firm. Thank you, Lloyd's firm. So now we say goodbye to Lloyd. And I know that he will hear the blessed words from our Savior as he passes through heaven's gates. Well done. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter the joys of our Lord. Goodbye, Lord, rest. Rest in peace. You earned it. Tribute to Lord Morrison Brown, past master of Lodge Imperial Service number 978 on the roll of the Grand Lodge of Scotland. When the chariots fill the air, brother, may we meet thee there. When the earth's firm walls are riven, brother, may we meet in heaven. Brother Lord Morrison Brown became the master of Lodge Imperial Service in the Scottish Freemason District in Jamaica on June 1, 2006. Brother Brown also sat in the chair of Lodge Stony Hill. Brother Brown was par excellence in his work of the Lodge and for whom many of our brethren regarded as incomparable. He showed us all that work in Masonry was not just learning the words, but creating the interest and excitement within the listener. Our late esteemed brother served at the Jamaica Public Service Company as human industrial relations manager and on retirement was a commissioner for the industrial disputes, tribunal and a lay preacher in the Methodist Church. As we say our farewell to our brother, we look to another short poem. The master speaks, the work is done. The gavel sounds, God calls us home. We will miss him dearly, but his memory is deeply etched in our hearts and minds. May the great architect of the universe comfort and strengthen his widow, the rest of his family, friends and associates, and the brethren he leaves behind. Rest in peace in the eternal East, Brother Lloyd. Your work in the quarries has been well and truly done, so mote it be. From the Lodge Imperial Service, in the Scottish Freemason District in Jamaica. Tribute to the life of Brother Lloyd Brown, Methodist Church's Kingston, East Kingston Circuit. Kingston, Jamaica. On behalf of the Methodist Church's East Kingston Circuit and our superintendent, Minister Reverend Per Cordell Zafar, we express our sincere condolences to Brother Lloyd Brown's widow, Pamela, family members and relatives of this moment of bereavement. Brother Brown's passing is felt deeply by many in Jamaica, especially those of the Methodist denomination. He was a spiritual leader teacher and scholar who harnessed all his God-given talent in service to mankind. He was a member of the MEMS Fellowship, a Sunday school teacher and superintendent, circuit steward, congregational steward, communion steward, local preacher, and secretary of pastoral and, con and council meetings. He was also part of the music ministry as a member of the senior choir at Vineyard Town Methodist Church. We recall his passion for chanting of canticles and psalms. His tenor, his tenor voice resounded as his eyes sparkled with delight 
with some of his favorite hymns, such as, I bring my sins to thee, Savior, again, to thy dear name we raise. Now I have found the ground wherein, and Holy Spirit, hear us. Members of St. Mark's Methodist Church also remember their special talent in choir speaking, as well as articulation and retentive memory made rallies and concerts as impressive as Shakespeare plays. Trust, credibility, reliability, generosity, and commitment to task were hallmarks of Brother Brown's character. He fulfilled his preaching appointments with utmost care and attention and could always be called on to fill in at the last moment if someone fails to show up. He was witty, adept at expressing ideas, linking to his wide knowledge and experience. He had a special place in his heart for the poor, the needy, the downhearted, sick, and disabled. His acts of kindness was undeniable. One church member rightly said that Brother Brown honestly did not know how to say no to any request for help. Brother Brown was a consummate gentleman a man of good family and social standing, someone who cared, was courteous and meek. He commanded respect and gave respect to everyone. He gave service without counting the cost. His Christian walk was encapsulated in Isaiah 6, verse 8, Here I am, send me. We will keep and cherish fond memories of him and respect the legacy of love and service he has left in Jamaica. May the angels lead him to paradise, and may the martyrs greet him at his arrival home. May the choir of angels welcome him, as with Lazarus, who was poor, and may he have peace everlasting. Amen. Would you please join in the singing of hymn number 377, It Is Well With My Soul.
be seated. The gospel lesson this afternoon comes from John 14. Hear these words. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. For in a little while, the world will no longer see me. But you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. I have said things, these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. For I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not let them be afraid. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O Lord, may the words in my mouth today and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to you on this day as we remember and celebrate the life of Lloyd Morrison Brown. Amen. Lloyd came into this world on May 21st, 1936, and went to be with his Lord and Savior on January 15th, 2023. As you've heard from many of the family and friends, Lloyd was a very kind, patient, caring, charming, and loving person. It was amazing to see how much of an impact that he had on so many lives, not only here in the U.S., but in Jamaica. To read what some of the family and friends have stated about Lloyd just warms your heart. Some have said there's so much to be said about this loving and remarkable man who impacted so many lives. He will be sadly missed. Carlene said Uncle Lloyd, as he was affectionately called by the neighborhood kids in Jamaica, was a kind, calm, and eloquent soul loved by all who came to know him. She said, I always admired his charm, the immaculate care that he took of his vehicle, (laughs) almost matching his style, and he always was well-dressed. His niece, Celeste, said it was a joy to be in his presence. He was warm, clever, charming, loving, easy to talk to, and he had a great sense of humor. She said, he taught me a lot, and we shared many laughs and memories, which I treasure. Victor said, Lloyd was a mentor to me and a friend for a number of years. He said, I learned many things from him, and he shaped my life and made me into the man I am today. He was kind, patient, caring, and very pleasant to be around. Another says, Mr. Brown was my good friend and colleague, and I learned a great deal from him, especially with regards to my relationship with my team members. He was a true gentleman with kindness and will always be remembered. His brother, Jay, said, how does one capture in a few words or a book of words the beauty and worth of this man, this remarkable creation? He said it was a blessing to grow up together, and you heard from him said how the three of them would act like they were the three musketeers and spend the time together. 
His brother Noel said, Lloyd, my brother, my friend, a real life role model. Confident, smart, but calm and level-headed. He loved and served his church and sang in the church choir. He was a lay preacher. He had a genuine love for people and was easy to be around. He said he made me feel loved as a younger brother. His sister Linda said Lloyd was very witty and sharp intellectually. Even recently, and when his time and his failing days, he would recite poetry, he would sing hymns, and he would remember his sibling's birthday. She said as a young girl, she was thrilled when she could correspond with him when he was studying in England. And he'd often correct her in her writing. But he was a good brother, she said. You heard about the tribute from the Methodist Church in Kingston, Jamaica. And one of the special things that I loved about this one part of the tribute, it said, Brother Brown was very worthy of note in his service to humanity. That he had a special spot in his heart for the poor, the needy, the downhearted, the sick, and the disabled, that his acts of kindness were undeniable, and that they would always keep and cherish fond memories of him and the legacy of love and service that he gave to the people of Jamaica. When Peggy and I visited him, uh, once he was sitting, and while he didn't say much at the first, We asked him to sing, and he sang, and he sang, and he sang. He loved to sing. And when I hear all these kind words from friends and family, the first thing that came to my mind was Lloyd was a servant. He loved his family. He had a heart for humanity. He had a love of God that he was not afraid to share with other people. And this is exactly, is not what Jesus tells us to do. To serve others, to be there for the poor and the needy and the downhearted and the sick and the disabled. The very people that Lloyd would help was the very ones that Jesus helped when he was there. The outsiders. The ones no one else, anyone to deal with. Lloyd would serve these folks. Jesus' command to love God with our whole heart and soul and mind and strength and to love your neighbor as yourself, you see Lloyd doing these things. Now, was he perfect? No, but who is? None of us are perfect, but that's why we can repent and that's why we confess to Jesus so he will forgive us from our sins so that we can receive the promise of eternal life and the resurrection to come. So that our imperfections of this life will become perfect when we are with the Father. Jesus tells us in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Well, who is not a whosoever? That we all have a chance to inherit the gift of eternal life. He said in John 14, In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I am going to come and prepare a place for you and then come and take you to where I am so that where I am you will be also. We know Lloyd was a believer in Jesus Christ And we know that Jesus had prepared a place for him and he has taken his place in his dwelling place and he is now resting. Resting with the angels, resting with Jesus, resting in peace. A place where we all at some point of time will be. Today we celebrate the life 
of a servant of God in Lloyd Morrison Brown. And we give thanks for the love that he had for Pam and his family and his extended family and for all the children and friends both here and in Jamaica. We give thanks for the kindness and love and generosity that he had for so many people. And today, we celebrate his life. Today, we give thanks for Lloyd Morrison Brown. His brother so graciously said, may he have heard those words when he was received into heaven, well done, good and faithful servant. May we live the lives as Lloyd lived his. May we be the same people who love and show kindness and gentleness May we be a servant to share the love of God with all we come in contact with. May we truly love God and love our neighbors as Jesus has instructed us to do and as Lloyd so graciously showed us. That one day we may all hear those signs and those words, well done, good and faithful servant. Let us pray. Holy and merciful God, it has been a joy to hear the wonderful words of the type of servant that you created Lloyd to be. We thank you for his life. We thank you for the love and the kindness and the gratitude that he shared to so many people. We thank you for his answer to the answer that he received from you of the call to ministry. And that he would always make himself available when that time came. That he would go around the circuit just like many preachers did back then and preach at different places and continue to share the same message of how much you loved We thank you for giving him that message. Thank you for letting him share the love of your son, Jesus Christ, with so many. And thank you for letting him be a servant. Thank you for the love that he had for his family. Thank you for the wonderful memories that they will get to share with one another for years to come. And that through this day, we remember the good servant that he was. And now let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, the family will follow me out as we place Lloyd in our columbarium.
Eternal God, today we lay to rest and we hand to you, your servant, Lloyd Morrison Brown, sure and certain that he will receive the resurrection to come. We give thanks for his life. Ashes to ashes. May he continue to be a servant and may we be the servant that he was to so many people. Amen. Let us pray. God of the fall, your love never ends, and where all else fails, you still are God. We pray to you for one another in our need and for all anywhere who mourn with us this day. To those who doubt, give light. To those who are weak, give them strength. To all who have sinned, grant us your mercy. To all who sorrow, may you give us your peace. Keep true in us the love with which we hold one another in all of our ways. We put our trust in you. And to you, with your church on earth and in heaven, we pray the prayer, this prayer, today. Amen.
Our closing song is printed in your bulletin. When the roll is caught up yonder, let us stand and sing together. As we get ready to depart, you are welcome to join the family in our fellowship hall. If you go through these doors here and straight across, you will see where they're at, and the family welcomes you to join them there uh, following the service. Receive this benediction. May the peace of Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, both now and in the days to come, that your heart may be filled and that you may receive his peace in this time. Go in his name. Amen.